Hey everyone, how's it going? I hope you're all doing well today. This is the second part in my shields guide, and I was kind of struggling with what to make the guide on, because originally it was going to be how to parry every single enemy, and I still might do that. I do have footage of every single enemy and how to parry them. I can definitely go over that, but I think what would be more helpful is just talking about the art of parrying, because it definitely kind of is an art. Like, it's something that you kind of have to get used to. It takes a lot of practice. Uh, you're not going to get it the first time, and each enemy has their own different parrying styles, so you got to kind of figure it out. But I figured, let's just talk about parrying as a whole. So, when it comes to shields, and if you missed the first part of the guide, I will actually leave a card for it right now, so you can uh, view it in the top right corner. But, each shield has an ability to hold and to parry, with the exception of the parry shield where you can only parry. So... What that means is if you just hold it down, like you hold down the button, you'll take significantly less damage up to, I think, about 85 to 90% damage. And then you'll end up doing whatever effect that you need to do. It'll be like a lesser effect. For example, like the Rampart, if you hold it down, you'll only be able to do something like a second on the shield that goes around you. But a parry completely blocks an attack. And you get the full effect of the shield. So, for example, the Punishment Shield has a critical damage. If you parry, you'll get that critical damage on that enemy. And the difference between those two is that parrying is all about the timing. While holding it down, you can just hold it down. So both definitely have their situations where they can be used. Generally, though, you want to be parrying. And that's what we're going to go over today. So with that, leave a like, subscribe for more Dead Cells content, and enjoy the guide, everybody. The first group of attacks that we're going to be taking a look at is melee attacks. So melee attacks are any enemy that can come up to you and do like a close combat attack. Whether they have like a sword or whether they punch you or whether they just charge towards you. And these are like a variety of enemies. So most enemies in the game do some sort of melee attack. Some you can't parry. So for example slammers which are found mostly in the caverns and they're also found in the corrupted prison and they're found in the 5 ec spoiler area those you cannot parry sweepers which are the special enemy found in the ramparts you can't parry the concierge's aura and the little sweeping thing that he does you can't parry that so you can't parry everything but most attacks generally you can parry and we're going to be taking a look at the melee attacks that you can parry and basically what the timing is so that you can effectively get those parries off this is an example of an enemy that jumps towards you like the failed experiment or zombies. So that's really useful in pairing. Uh, these are a couple examples of pairing the bomber's sword attack, uh, the rampager's charge attack, and then the failed experiment jumping. And then I'm going to do the same thing again to this bomber. Just parry that stuff. So keep in mind with these parry attacks, you have more time to parry than you might think. You don't have to do it at the last possible second. You have a little, you have a, more than a few frames to be able to do it. And really, it's just about knowing that timing. Uh, you would rather parry too early than too late, in my opinion. I, my biggest advice is to get in the practice of parrying early. Um, you can see right here, I parry a little bit early against that uh, Yeter. But it's the same thing. Against Hand of the King, same thing. Just parry a little bit early. I don't need to do it exactly on time. There's no point in doing that, because otherwise you're going to end up getting hit. So with this Rampager... I know he's going to attack me, so I'm just going to hold it out, and then I should be good to go from there. Same thing against the Rampager again, and then again, uh, the Slasher on the bottom, it's going to be the exact same situation. I'm going to hold it out before he actually does his combo. So it's really, really useful just to get in the habit of doing it early rather than later. So all these examples you can see, I have no problem pairing any of these enemies. Uh, kamikazes are tricky, but when it starts to turn red after flashes a couple times, then you want to go for the parry. It's all about just getting into the habit of learning how to parry each of these enemies. Uh, you can see with that failed experiment, I'm able to uh, get the parry off and then kill the enemies from there. So if I want you guys to take anything from this, is that it's okay to be a little bit early on your timing. Um, and especially for like kamikazes and enemies like that, you can wait a little bit of time to parry. Like again, with the kamikazes, they're going to flash a couple times and then explode. You have time during that to get your parry off. Buzz cutters, they'll attack you from above. Sewer flies will attack you from above. Just be early on the parry. You don't have to be you don't want to be like too early obviously, but a little early is perfectly fine.
The next group of attacks that we're going to be taking a look at is the projectile attacks. So projectiles are basically stuff that's fired from an enemy. So it's not necessarily a melee attack, but like they're probably like ranged or something like that, and then they'll shoot something towards you. The most popular uh, enemy that does this is the Inquisitors. They shoot the little projectiles at you. Other enemies include Arbiters, which are found exclusively in the caverns. Um, the Giant shoots projectiles at you. Uh, bombs also count in this. I'm going to include bombs in this. So the Hammer drops bombs. Hand of the King drops bombs. The Bomber drops bombs. Grenadiers, Bombardiers, they all drop bombs. And you can parry all of those. So I'll show a couple examples of that as well. Knife throwers are a special case because they shoot multiple projectiles at you. The way to deal with that is something to note, and you probably have already seen this, parries reset after you get the parry off. So that means that as soon as you get one off, you can do it as many times as you need to. So with the knife thrower, you can spam the parry button three times. And then you should be good to go. That'll usually kill the knife thrower because they're extremely fragile. But if they don't, um, like with some elites that I'll be showing in a little bit, you should be able to get those off very, very quickly and then you should be fine. So as I said earlier, Inquisitors are the most popular enemy that you're probably going to be having to parry early on. You can wait a, a good amount of time before that happens. Um, with these Yeeters, they're going to chuck the jerk shrooms at you. There's a long period of time between that and their normal attack. You have a long time to parry. It, the timing's a little weird, but you can absolutely get used to it. There's a long time to do it. Um, there's something I want to show here, and that's basically you can turn around and parry. Like I said earlier, parrying is something that you can do infinite times in a row. So another situation is trying to use parries to get out of sticky situations. So with this blow gunner, and with all these blow gunners, actually, I know they're going to be shooting at me. So I want to be able to parry something as soon as I can. So I'm just I just keep parrying the blow gunner. He's going to keep running away until I find a situation in which I can start attacking. And then I can move from there because there's a masker blocking everything. So I want to be as careful as possible and not take a hit and not get more malleys damage or just damage in general. So um, parrying to avoid a sticky situation is also incredibly necessary, especially with uh, when it comes to these projectile enemies. Uh, you can see with this giant, uh, what I'm going to be doing is doing that multiple parry again. So one, two, three, four, all in a row. And you can perfectly do that just fine. Um, you're going to see it again with this uh, giant. He's going to trap me again. And then I'm going to get one, two, three off. If you miss time a parry, on the other hand, that's a little bit trickier. So Arbiters... Uh, you can actually jump and parry. That's something else I didn't mention earlier. Jumping and parrying is something that you might want to get used to over time. And that's really knowing where projectiles are going and where you are on the map. So these are all examples of me jumping for the Arbiter. Because, again, projectiles are pretty slow. So you should be able to get used to it. Um, with the knife throwers, you can parry as many times as you need to. So he shoots three projectiles at you. So it's one, two, three, boom. He's dead. And you're going to see another example of this coming up. And because I can parry as many times as I want, I'm also able to get the parry off on that slasher as well. And I can just keep parrying this knife throw. I don't have to worry about anything. And then I can just finish them off with the magic missiles from there. So when it comes to enemies like knife throwers, you really, really want to be able to just get as many of these parries off as possible. You can clear mobs like that instantly. Um, again, with Arbiters, shooting... Their shots are a little bit slow, so you should be able to maneuver around it and get a parry off. Or like I did earlier, you can jump and parry them. Uh, usually with the Arbiters, it's best to be on a level playing with them because they'll shoot right at you. They have shots that go straight at you. They'll go like 45 degrees and they'll go like 80 degrees up and down. So in terms of really just trying to get the best parry off... You really want to be right in front of them. And with most of these projectile enemies, you generally want to be right in front of them. Because it's very difficult to parry something that's shooting at you from another platform diagonally. With Inquisitors, it's a little bit easier because it's only one projectile. But I would get used to parrying things that are level with, with the projectiles. But with these ranged enemies, uh, I would start with trying to parry the Inquisitors from different platforms. And then you move your way up to Knife Throwers and Arbiters and then giant things like that. You can also parry bombs. So with this hammer, what you can see is me going and parrying each of these bombs. 
I'm able to clear out space for me and get the kill off as well. So that's like the ideal situation. But generally with enemies like that, you just want to be able to clear out some space for you. Um, this is a shield. This is a uh, elite arbiter. Well, close to an elite. Um, they have the health of an elite. So I have to parry more bombs. But really, I create that space for myself and I'm able to get out of that situation without getting hurt. Um, here's a bonus example of me doing a double parry. Um, again, just be very mindful of where you are. You can see me parrying the Hand of the King bombs, and because of that, I'm able to get some residual damage off on him as well. With the Bombardier, I actually miss the parry and then take the hit, but I'm able to get the second parry off, and then um, I'm good to go from there. So you can also parry these Ball and Chains as well, as well as the Shuriken. So mostly you're going to be doing these in the Challenge Rifts. So this is an example of me parrying the Shuriken. I'm going to be doing it a bunch of times just to show you guys. Uh, but in general, you only need to parry once or twice, and then you can move up that ladder. What this does is that it creates space because there's time in which the Shuriken is not going to be firing at you. So I get the parry there, and then I'm, I'm, then I'm able to move on. Here I can parry that little ball and chain, do it again. Um, I tried parrying it from above, but I don't think it works when you try to parry it from above. So you just want to be mindful of that. But parrying and challenge rips can often be very, very helpful as well. So that's going to be it for the second part of the shield guide. Uh, there are definitely a lot of different unique situations in which you can parry. Melee, projectiles, bombs, traps, and turrets. And there's other situations too that I didn't show in this video that you can also parry. So say for example, Timekeeper and Giant, they dropped the little crystals from above. You can parry those. Uh, the final 5BC boss has an attack where... For those of you who have played 5BC, when he does the down smash, there's a bunch of stuff that comes down. You can parry all that stuff too. There's a lot of different things that you can parry in this game. My best advice is just to try your best to parry as many, many things as you can. Something that I often tell 1BC and 2BC and 0BC players is just to run a double shield build. And I understand that, yeah, you're not going to be able to finish the game as quickly. You're not going to be able to complete things you're not going to be able to necessarily finish the game like that but what that does is that it really gets you acquainted with parrying and enemy attack patterns and like I said each enemy has their own very distinct attacking patterns and in this video I chose not to go over each and every single one of them I can absolutely do that in a future video if you guys would want me to do that uh, but that would take a long time for me to do I do have a lot of footage about that but I would need to kind of do a lot of editing because each enemy is very unique and each enemy can do multiple attacks. It just, just depends. Um, I really think that the best way to get acquainted with pairing is just to do it. And once you get used to it, the game becomes about maybe three times more easier. No, I'm just kidding. It definitely becomes a lot easier though when you learn how to parry. And again, it all comes down to practice. I call it an art because practice makes perfect. Uh, I'm going to leave it on that note. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I really appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to watch my content. Leave a like, subscribe for more Dead Cells content, and I'll see you in the next one, everyone. One day I woke up, I didn't have shit. I had to work hard just to grab this. Blue faces stacked up, that's my fetish. I'm ready, I'm ready for these bandages. They said I wouldn't make it, who asked you? I got brought into this life I didn't ask to. I'ma make most of it all cause I had to. You get money from your mama, I chase it because I had to.